I announced last night to the social media world that I'm doing um, the carnivore diet for a bit because I've recently been reading um, Paul Saladino and Sean Baker, different doctors have been doing it. And um, the results are, are awesome and the science they present with it behind like, you know, all the plants that we think are healthy and how they may not be that healthy for us or for some of us is intriguing. So um, I like to experiment on myself. So I'm going to do that. So uh, I went today and got blood work done this morning. I did a stool test this morning and I did a, a uh, medical grade body count today. And then I'll do this. My plan is to do it for three months and then do the blood stool and body comp again on myself and just see case of n equals one what does it what does it turn out as hmm. and i have to admit already um you know my wife had almond flour cookies on the counter at lunch and is i already had to deny myself <laughs> so uh but i've been doing it today's the official start but uh friday and saturday i essentially ate carnivore um my typical life i'm i'm taking in about 400 grams of carbs a day and on Friday, I only ate 100, and yesterday, I only ate 65. So I was like easing my way into zero. Um, and I, 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 I like often once a week will skip lunch and work right through, and then, you know, fast for 24, 28 hours. So it's, I don't, it's not really going to be a big deal. I don't think the hardest thing will be getting enough fat. Um, so I'm actually buying some beef kidney fat from the farm tomorrow, some beef suet, which will help augment my fat intake. So uh, Yum. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to try it out. I had beef liver, I had uh, salmon, beef liver and bacon for lunch. Can You can do worse than that, in my opinion. Bacon, bacon wrapped chicken livers are pretty good too. Yes, bacon anything's is good. Yeah, that's true. So Patterson, have you been have you been doing it? I know you're, you're, oh, you're constantly uh, I, experiment. I have so much that we could talk about regarding this, which is why I joined. So yeah, I too followed uh, Paul Saladino and Sean Baker. I follow them both. Okay. And then uh, Food.Lies, Sally Norton. There's a bunch of, of people in this community that, that do the, the carnivore. But I I think Paul is, is more, at least in, like from what I've experienced, I do better with a little bit of carb. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I'll do animal based. So I'll do heavy focus on red meat. And I've been doing this for over a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. So I focus heavily on red meat and then I'll add in like a banana or like some Bulgarian yogurt or like, um, you know, it like, or uh, raw dairy. I've been on a huge raw dairy kick recently too. Okay. Um, so yeah, I love Paul Saladino. I love Sean Baker. They're, they're brilliant. They're really shining a lot of light into the space. Like, of people recovering from all these crazy, like who who would have thought drinking, you know, a bunch of spinach yeah. and celery and carrots is not actually potentially good for you, you know? Yeah. It's it's really it's really crazy stuff. So yeah, I've been experimenting for I guess a year and a half now. I never went carnivore like you though. Uh, I've been animal based, so okay. I, just, I never quit carbs. I just I reduce my carbs way down to like maybe sixty a day, uh -huh. and I'm up fifteen pounds and my blood sugar is super stable and it's definitely um a game changer for sure nice and i, and I think long term i'll probably do some carb eventually just because i like to do some carb and right well, and, and you train so much so it's like you yeah know, you, it, i mean sean baker does zero carb and he still lifts you know 400 pound deadlifts and stuff so i guess you can do both but you'll just have to you know yeah and, and see what works for you yeah i want to experiment with it this way and then any any extra carb is just bonus right so like the last two days as i was lowering my carbs like yesterday my my 65 carbs were um i had uh lindell had sent me actually paleo uh tortilla wraps from utah so i had two of those with my ground beef last night lindell and they were yummy so that was they're good huh yeah thank you <laughs> So that was 35 of my carbs. And then I had 30, what was it? Oh, I ate a dark chocolate bar that had 30 grams of, of carb in it. Um, so those are my 65 carbs yesterday. And the day before that I had a banana and I think I ate two gluten-free sandwiches. So um, 
So the bread on that. So, I mean, I can do without it. I'm interested to see how my training does, like you said, Patterson, yeah, um, yeah. To, to see, because like Paul says, it could take weeks, you know, six, eight weeks maybe um, to start feeling the energy that I feel with carbs, without the carbs in the gym. So we'll see. Yeah. But but again, I, I could ease. I think I could easily do this if I was allowed to have, you know, 100, 150 carbs a day. So, so you know, I want to do it the hard way first, and then we'll we can always add. Do you have to yeah. do any supplementation of uh, vitamins, minerals? Um, because I know meat doesn't have vitamin C, let's say, and you know, do you have to watch that? Uh, so, Paul Paul says what we believe we need from a vitamin C standpoint is way overblown. Um, but he does, you know, there is, um, there are things that he will, like he'll wake up and drink a couple of teaspoons of sea salt in water to get uh, salt. He'll do um, bone meal to get the calcium or he'll eat eggshells to get the calcium. So their liver is going to give you the fat solubles and the suet, um, the fat solubles, the B vitamins, the uh, carnitine, carnosine, creatine will be in the meats. So um, the vitamin C, I'm, I'm blanking right now, Patterson. I know we talked about it. Um, I think the vitamin C was in the bone broth and collagen stuff. I'm not, I'm not remembering what his favorite source was of the vitamin C. Well, well, Paul does fruit. So he does papaya and he does um, mangoes, banana, pineapple. So, But that's new. He didn't used to. He didn't used to, right. He yeah. was carnivore, I think, for the first two years. And then he found carbs helped him better training, so he he started added to fruit uh, added fruit back in. But Sean Baker does literally only steak and eggs, yeah. so he's been doing that for six years. Um, I'm not sure exactly in terms of vitamin C, but he's been doing it for six years. So um, okay, I'll 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 look it up again, Sue. But he was yeah. he was essentially saying, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but like people say we need grams of vitamin c and he was saying we might need like 200 milligrams um uh, like 200 milligrams a day would be a lot hold on one second yeah because that's what they used to worry about with uh you know people coming over in ships you know yeah scurvy. Well, no it's the liver is what he uses here i'll, I'll share oh, with okay. you so um this is this is a one thing he provides and in his book a, a little tidbit is um uh, humans and guinea pigs are one of the, I think there's might be another mammal that cannot produce their own vitamin C. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so liver will give you 25 milligrams. Oh, fish, okay. fish row is 16. Um, so uh, you see liver, what a powerhouse it is for a lot of, you know, it's kind of like your daily multi in and of itself. Um, yeah, we're, do, um, do you do cook liver? Or do you, um, yeah. do you do supplementation? Uh, no, I ate two ounces of, of cooked beef liver for lunch. Yeah, I, oh. I bought I bought uh, I bought like three, I think three pounds of it this weekend. I gotta send you a link, a product link. It's um, have you do you know Carnivore Aurelius? Have you ever have you seen him on Instagram? No. So he can't keep this product in stock, and it bothers me. But it's this thinly <laughs> it's a thinly sliced air fried beef liver and salt. That's it. Just two ingredients, and he. Okay. He's, they're real thin and then the the end result is like this crunchy chip and so like it's like almost like eating a potato chip but it's just beef it's just salted liver i want and that that'd be a is, lot easier <laughs> it is phenomenal i'm telling you right now he it flies off the shelf as soon hey, as it's got stuff. will you throw the link in the chat absolutely I, I mean you're gonna be disappointed because you won't ever get it because it's never yeah. in stock but because patterson <laughs> buys it up as soon as he gets it oh I'm <laughs> yeah, so he only sells them in packs of 10, so it's a hundred bucks, but you get 10 bags. So it's, a, you know, it's a. I also uh, bought a beef kidney. So I'm, I'm going to learn how to cook and eat that. And I bought a bunch of chicken livers, which those I can just pop. I mean, those are really good. But the, I had the beef liver today and I had a friend who had a grass fed farm uh, probably eight years ago and he gave me some back then. And I, I, I used, I cooked it with ground beef, but I didn't use enough ground beef in ratio with the, <laughs> with the liver. So I ended up giving it to the dogs cause it was gross. Um, but today we cooked it and I ate it by itself and it was fine. So, you know, that if was exciting. You soak, 
If you soak liver in milk, actually, it takes out some of the bitterness. I don't know that you want to because it's dairy, but yeah, if okay. you if you do soak it in milk, it makes it more of a normalized meat. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Now, what about fiber? Lemon juice too. What's that? You can soak in lemon juice as well. Okay. Oh, that's like a raw cooking trick, huh? Well, I soak it in lemon juice and then I still cook it anyway, just to to take okay. some of the bittery. And then bacon, bacon always helps. Um, cool, thank you. The the fiber, Sue, you should read his book, Carnivore Code. It's really interesting. But the fiber, okay. he he argues um, that if you're eating a nose to tail carnivore diet, then you're going to include connective tissues, and the connective oh. tissues um, are the fiber. And so essentially, on a carnivore diet, your microbiome will change because obviously you're starving the plant eaters and feeding the meat eaters. But the, the he's he over case studies and testing they found no difference uh, in health in people with a meat eating microbiome versus a plant eating microbiome. Yes, they do change, but it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't appear to change GI health. And um, and so, what are the benefits besides you know helping you you know train? Um, what other benefits does it have? Um, so it's supposed to be huge for say Crohn's ulcerative colitis right. and, and GI issues because you're removing plants and their lectins and agglutinins and polyphenols and things that are all, um, there's a large body of evidence to suggest they're actually pro-oxidants and pro-inflammatory. So that's where Patterson was referring to the, who would have thought the green smoothie would be unhealthy, right? right. Um, and so for oh, GI, GI complaints, but then also essentially, um, anything where insulin resistance is an issue. So improving mm -hmm. insulin sensitivity. Um, if you are a fan of keto, you're essentially going to be turned keto here. Um, because you're, you're, you're going to eat protein, right? But to get the calories you need, you're going to have to eat a ton of fat, especially if you're doing the no carb. So like for me, I'm going to do about 250 grams of protein a day. And then like, I think it worked out to be, um, about that and fat too. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be about 31 to 3,300 calories a day, uh, which I was doing with carbs, but it's a lot easier with carbs. Hmm. Um, so, so you have to replace it with the fat. So your protein pretty much, you know, you're, you're going to end up going keto. The protein gets an insulin response, but it's not as large as a carb response. So over time, as you be, switch to that fat burning you'll you'll stay in ketosis better with it um so uh so to answer your question ketosis uh, oftentimes people report mental clarity with with a keto ketogenic type diet and neurologic help so um you know the original ketogenic diet was created for things like seizures and epilepsy and neurologic dysfunction so i suspect um you know more mental clarity or i'm interested to see if i can get get more mental clarity. And then I'm, I'm, I'm really interested just to see the labs too. Like I don't necessarily have a real complaint. I mean, my training's fine too. I'm really just doing it to, to fiddle and see, is there a next oh, level oh, sure. I can get? And so for me, the labs um, will be interesting, the blood work and then the stool too, because I'm interested to see here's my microbiome today. And then what's it look like after three months of carnivore, right? Will it be a meat want? Like, what, what will I see? And then the body comp will be interesting as well. Yeah, I had a patient who, when carnivore was first starting, she's, she was doing carnivore because she had uh, candida mm -hmm. overgrowth in her gut. And she felt great on it, but she was just eating bacon and a burger. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's not going to do much for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th there's... you. So there's a difference. It's kind of like paleo or keto or any diet, right? People say they're doing something, but they're eating two things, which no diet is only two things, right? Unless you're literally doing the banana diet or something, but, right. but like a, a carnivore diet isn't bacon and burger. It's if you're doing nose to tail, right? So it'd be bacon and burger, but there's the organ meats and there's the connective tissues and the, you know, the, the whole animal. And yeah. that's not just cows. So I found an awesome site that sells um, elk, bison, and venison 
like ground beef by themselves or they have what's called ancestral options where the the kidney and the liver organ meats are, are ground up into the ground bison or ground elk or whatever so you know you can eat that burger and have the organ meats in there already so i don't have to do two things well around where i am i have to fight off the vultures for the venison meat so yes. the organs <laughs> yeah. are, they're getting hit by cars the deer all the time around here yeah yeah so you know keep a freezer in your trunk right so you're ready. <laughs> um, yeah so so i'm excited to see see how it goes and um you know i i think probably patterson you can let us know your experience with this but i suspect and i'm not someone that really needs variety but but you know i could see it just getting old in terms of okay you know another rib, another ribeye <laughs> i'm tired of chewing <laughs> uh i can confirm that ribeye does not get old i've eaten probably i mean five steaks a week you know I'll do, I'll do ground beef for like lunch and then because i'll do i do two meal a day okay. so then i'll do like a steak at night slathered in some grass-fed butter some sea salt no it, it doesn't get old it, it literally every time i eat a steak my brain explodes with dopamine and, I feel <laughs> like, and yeah i mean i you know i did this because i was eating so much plants and fruit before like when i came to you i don't know i guess it was almost two years ago now I had the reactive hypoglycemia and insulin resistance and all that garbage. And that was just because of I, I didn't eat enough meat simply and then I yeah. ate too much plants. Yeah. And I completely reversed it. I'm satiated all day long. My skin's glowing. I have a killer mustache. Yeah. I've never been able yeah. to put on muscle. I've come up 15 pounds. Like it's going really well. I'm kind of scared of what my mustache will look like if I do this for three months, but yeah. <laughs> I'll try it. Hey, how's then, the meat? Oh, go ahead. The, um, the one thing that I wanted to maybe talk about at some point tonight is cholesterol mm. and LDL, HDL, and then of course triglycerides. Yeah. Because I don't know if you've seen Paul or Sean's um, podcast on this specifically, but you know, almost every single person who goes on the carnivore diet or animal based will have a spike in LDL. Mm. And, it, and you know, there's so much controversy around LDL, HDL, and then of course having low triglycerides is good. But the focus on being like, oh, you shouldn't go carnivore because you're going to have a spike in LDL. Well, it, there's so much science now and so much research coming out to support that LDL not only isn't bad for you, but people in, in cultures that have the highest LDL have longer life expectancies. Yeah. And they have less rates of depression and anxiety. And you, you, you have way more... Um, you have better hormonal health because you have so much cholesterol as like the building block. Substrate, yeah. Vitality, yeah. So, because my cholesterol, you know, I'm at like three. I'm in. I'm in champion numbers right now. I'm up to like three twelve total cholesterol, but my triglycerides are extremely low. I'm talking like forty nine, but my yeah. LDL is like you know two hundred. So, but clearly, I'm metabolically healthy. Yeah. But if I were to go to a doctor, they they would try and put me on a statin. I'm like, uh, you're insane. You yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. And you're much healthier with those numbers than you were when you came to my office with Absolutely. much lower numbers. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my LDL was like 70. I mean, like I was on the brink of death. basically. Yeah. 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 So yeah, to your point, you know, we've been marketed to, and we've covered this many times, uh, the cholesterol and, and statins and all that stuff. I won't go too far into it, but what, what these guys are adding to the conversation, what is probably behind the populations living longer with higher levels is that there's a, a significant body of evidence suggesting LDL is protective against infection. And it, and I've taught patients for years, if your cholesterol is high and your LDL is high, um, it, at least in the context of the standard American diet, that's that's an inflammatory marker for us. So we, we shouldn't reflexively take a stat and we should say, why am I inflamed and where? And go find that, right? And if it's if it's due to infection, then that should come down when you clear the infection, right? Or if it's due to whatever the, the inflammatory, if it's due to high homocysteine punching holes in your vessels, if we go tackle homocysteine, we don't need that um, handyman patching your drywall as much anymore, right? So it's it's understanding the cause. So um, if if in the in the studies that um, Drs. Baker and Saladino talk about the, the patients that whose LDL are going up, 
um, in the context of health like Patterson, if he's not systemically inflamed, then it's likely uh, it, their immune supporting roles protecting him from the new tridemic that's coming of COVID and flu and RSV, right? So he his meat is protecting him and he's not gonna need 13 mRNA vaccines to keep him healthy. He can just eat another steak. Um, so, so the immune roles of LDL and of all the lipoproteins are essentially not addressed at all in mainstream conversation. And that's what these guys are thinking that the increase is due to, or, um, yeah, it's what's behind it. This is super fascinating because I just read, well, this huge study just came out on red meat where they um, combined all of these cohorts together mm -hmm. and they used that new burden of proof theory thing where they're like, we are going to start with the fact that it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to have to prove us wrong. And this is like Mark Sisson posted this and he's so diligent about going through studies, but it looked at like six or seven diseases that they are adamant about red meat causing. Mm -hmm. And then they went through all of this and they could not prove it. Like they were wrong and they could not prove anything. Yeah. And they had to state that the evidence against this is weak or non-existent. Yeah. So like it was fascinating. And I just read this and then you would have this on here. So it was Yeah, great. if you if you can share a link to that. I'm gonna and drop then, it in the chat. Yeah, please. Thank you. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, it's just exposing the house of cards uh that is the cholesterol heart hypothesis, which has been, you know, extrapolated to the cholesterol whole life hypothesis, right? Because remember, statin drugs is the highest selling class of drugs of all time. And they've been marketing to you since the 50s that your arteries are your sink and bacon grease is the clog. And, you know, so take the statin so that doesn't happen to you. And anytime they study it, that's that's not true. None of the studies show that. Just like last week we were talking about, you know, serotonin deficiency isn't what's behind depression and SSRIs don't help. Why? Because that, that hypothesis behind the mechanism behind depression is wrong. And so, you know, they'll keep pumping that hypothesis because the entire Prozac and SSRI class of drugs is built on it. And 80% of Americans believe it, but you know, for those in the know, or for those who are seeking, they'll, they'll realize, wow, I've got to look at other ways to, to lower my depression or get rid of it. Um, hey. so about those studies too. If you ever look closely at um, the studies demonizing red meat or trying to rather if you look at what they're feeding the the participants in the study yeah. or what they're measuring it's mcdonald's it's yeah. it's all this garbage mm -hmm. seed oil wheat flour fried mm -hmm. potatoes and then a coke with your whopper it's like no 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 like the the the, the participants in these studies aren't eating grass-fed ribeyes every day right you know? <laughs> it's not fake That's exactly and what else is interesting is in in tandem with this is what's the new mantra you're hearing, right? We need to stop eating meat. We need to stop eating cows. Eat this uh, right. plant Cow burger. Are, like are changing the climate. You know? They're they're attacking they're attacking meat. So then it's like okay, well historically, if I've paid attention and developed pattern recognition skills, everything they demonize ends up being the the best thing for us, right? And everything they tell us we need to do is is the opposite. So the whole push right now is to eliminate meat. Like Bill Gates wants you eating plant burgers and cricket protein. And it's like, no, let's eat cows and cows don't hurt the environment. Industry hurts the environment if we're, if we're boiling it down. So, um, Linda, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to ask a dumb question, but we shouldn't change our diet unless you. Correct. Change it. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. Stick, stick with what you're doing unless we speak individually um, and decide to change that. Um, so, yes. Um, we good on this or we want to talk some more about this? I'm happy to stay on this. We can we can address the other idea I had some other time. I have oh. one final recommendation for cooking a steak. Okay. And that is an infrared grill. If you don't have one, you should oh. totally get one. 
like cool. uh, Sean Baker uses, 90 seconds, 1,500 degrees. It, your steak's done in four minutes. Perfectly cooked. Juicy. So it's like it's like the the pressure cooker for steak, instant pot for steak. <laughs> kind of. I mean, you, you, yeah, it's basically this infrared little grill. You know, it heats up to fifteen hundred degrees, and you just shove it in there, flip it for four minutes, and it's done. And it's not. It's not like seared. Oh yeah, it's seared on top and bottom, and then okay. it's you know you can adjust it. But if you like that kind of raw, um, pink red center, and then and then sear on top and bottom. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So it's just maybe well, lots of time if you're going to go on carnivore for a long time. So yeah. Do you have a brand? Um, Sean Baker has a couple brands that are really good, but yeah, I can drop. I'll drop it in the chat. Okay. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Um. Before you move on, Scott gosh. texted, "Tell everybody hi." <laughs> What's up, Scott? <laughs> um, we only have like 13 minutes left, so I'll, we can stay on this if we have this. Or, or does anyone have questions not related to this that they really want to ask? This is sort of related to this because you're talking about butter. Mm -hmm. You know, because we just talked about not changing your diet unless we talk about it. But it's like, it's funny that we've been kicking around reintroducing grass fed butter yeah. and cooking, you know, just to see what happens. Yeah. Try it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm going to know. Yeah. And actually, um, if I can, can I share something kind of personal to you, but everyone doesn't have the pieces, so it won't really matter. That's fine. It's um, a, so that's one, why yeah, one interesting tidbit I've learned through this is that carnosine is a really good antioxidant and it removes glycated end products from the system well. And one, one thing that can drive hemoglobin A1C up is high blood sugar. But people in the context of someone with not insulin resistance and blood sugar issues, it could be oxidative stress keeping the A1C high. So perhaps increase upping, taking a carnosine supplement and or upping your steak intake to get more carnosine may help the A1C drop, okay. right? Through, yep. the, through the antioxidant mechanism, not the lower blood sugar mechanism. Right, because that's sense? fine. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I've also run into that plateau of like i don't i'm not taking in enough protein yeah i've hit that so so that could be a double whammy for you in a positive way i was thinking of you once they once they said that and i learned it i was like oh this could be this yeah. is jennifer maybe 